Hi everyone and welcome to Golden Maps. So this video is going to serve kind of as just an introductory to the channel because you know why not. <laughs> so my goal for this channel is to show you how I make the maps that I make for our games that we play. So um, right now uh, I'm finishing up a campaign that's lasted almost a year. Uh, we're moving to Germany and so we're gonna have to start a whole new campaign with new people. So that's a little scary, but at the same time, during this past year, um, it was my first time really being like the DM the whole time instead of just, you know, the few one-offs that I've done in the past. So it's been an experience for sure, but I just wanted to show you guys, you know, how I do what I do and maybe help somebody else along the way um, with ideas or just showing, you know, how I get what I get done. Um, primarily, I use two, Primarily, I use two programs, software, kind of it's a mix of both, which is Dungeon Fog, which is a browser-based dungeon builder, and the second one is Arkham Forge, which is a software that you download. That's forty dollars. Dungeon Fog is, I believe, five dollars a month for the like premium access, which I a thousand percent pay for because it's so good you guys like I also just um also purchased Dungeon Draft which is made by Mega Spluce the same person who makes Wonder Draft I haven't got to play with it as much but I'm hoping that I will um because I also subscribed to three main people when it comes to assets and building the dungeons themselves or the maps themselves and that is Two Minute Tabletop which fits in perfectly the art style with Mega Sploot, and I believe, I believe it's a guy and his wife, and his wife is who makes the artwork for Dungeon Draft. And it's a very similar, it's a very, very specific art style. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. And Two Minute Tabletop looks very similar to that, and so it's seamless. Um, there's a part of our adventure <laughs> where we have airships and I couldn't figure out how to make an airship anywhere else except that two minute tabletop has airship and ship assets and so I was able to make the ships with that and I did it in Ark and Forge and so it looked fine and it looks okay like it looks fine <laughs> but at the same time I would have loved to have been able to use dungeon draft and I'll probably if I can figure out how to export them into or transfer them over into it that way it's more seamless in its surroundings like I said it's a very specific art style on the opposite end of that um, especially when it comes to Ark and Forge and Dungeon Fog I use Dungeon Fog to build the base. So I use it for the walls, I use it for the doors, the windows, um, any like brushwork, like base brushwork, like the ground, water, stuff like that is what I use Dungeon Fog for. Um, because the walls are, they can be kind of tricky sometimes, but it's so incredibly seamless. It looks so fucking good, guys. Um, the only problem is my computer doesn't really have the power <laughs> to do large maps, which I like. I don't like having to switch between buildings. Um, you know, we had a huge city that they went to, it was called Terra Heil, and it had, it wasn't even huge to be honest, it was just the map itself was really large. It wasn't like a super dungeon or anything like that, it just had a lot of shops in it, and it had a lot of just town things, because I knew they were going to be there for a while. So I made it all on one map and my computer had a really hard time and every now and then like we use virtual tabletops and so I don't print the maps out, I put them up on our giant TV that we have and everybody sits around the table and they do it and I do it for my laptop, it's all very high tech <laughs> as it is. And because of that, 
I knew that moving them around, like if I put too much stuff in there or the map was too large, it started to act kind of funky, you know? Like my computer just couldn't handle it. My graphics card wasn't, it like isn't good enough. And so trying to move them through every now and then the screen would black out and we'd have to restart the whole map over again. Um, sometimes it would save, sometimes it wouldn't. <laughs> Um, and you know, sometimes actually physically moving them through the map would take a while if I have the you know, dynamic lighting enabled, if I have the fog enabled. Sometimes it just, it's really slow and it hinders the game. So the workaround for that is, again, especially because it's um, inner, like browser based, uh, the good part of that was that I could use it with two laptops, which made it a little bit easier. I would have the actual DM like laptop set up, and then I would have the other laptop set up, hook it to the ethernet, and then have that one HDMI to the TV. And it worked out much better for a while until I purchased Ark and Forge. <laughs> and I went back and forth about Ark and Forge for a really long time because I really, really wanted it, but I had to learn a whole new set. I had to learn a whole new system and uh, let me tell you, <laughs> that within itself, like learning Dungeon Fog and learning the commands and then having to go to a new software program and learn all new commands and some of the new commands are different. And so if I right click here and it does something else in another program and my brain's still on Dungeon Fog and I right click and I fuck something up, like it takes a minute. It's like switching between languages and Overall, I found that building the actual foundations in Dungeon Fog and then transferring it over to Ark and Forge has been the best option for me because in addition to Two Minute Tabletop, I also use Forgotten Adventures and Ventus Maps, Ven Venatus, Ventus Maps, I, I don't know how you say it. I'll, I'll link everything, you know, obviously. So. Their art styles are more realistic. Um, the color scheme is more vibrant. In its, it's not so much hand drawn. I mean, it's all hand drawn, but it's not so much like sketched looking. It's very like, uh, very crisp. <laughs> and I love that. My players love that, and it fits different settings, you know. And when I throw them up, like, and I, especially because I can download them all in 300 DPI, like, bruh, let me fucking tell you, that shit is beautiful. Because my husband, bless his soul, he decided we were gonna buy a 4K TV, and it looks really good. <laughs> um, so transferring the base into Ark and Forge and then putting all the assets in, all the furniture, all the bad guys, all the the lighting, everything like that, and then just being able to throw it up on the TV, you know, one computer, HDMI, TV, done. I don't have to worry about it. Um, the Fog of War system, I really like, and the lighting system, both kind of also run into the problem with my computer's not very good, so I slows everything down. But overall, you know, I can get away with one or the other. You know, if I don't have any like lights on, if I just have the picture of the light or the, the idea of the light there and turn on Fog of War, I can set the characters like internal lights, like the tokens for the characters themselves at a black light that goes through Fog of War. And so then as they move through the map, I don't have to hand erase everything. It will erase it itself as their light shines through the fog. And I set that distance to whatever their view is and it just makes things so much easier. <laughs> because then as I move them, what they see is what they see. And I don't have to worry about does, you know, are they looking at something they're not supposed to look at? Is this, you know, around the corner, like 
that they're not supposed to see is this corridor over here you know that is supposed to be hidden because they're you know however many feet away from it I don't have to worry about them looking and trying to not metagame through the map you know because that can be hard you know especially if you see it all right in front of you it can be hard to say like we should go this way because I see some stuff over there you know so it works out better for my players it's easier for me and overall like I couldn't choose between which program I like better I like them both for different things and I haven't like I said I haven't really done a whole lot with Wonder Draft or excuse me not Wonder Draft Dungeon Draft um, but it looks super fucking promising like I'm so excited to get to use it to use that art style for different things. Um, I was lucky enough, as it were, to, you know, have a husband who is a thousand percent supportive of whatever I decide to do when it comes to our D&D stuff. And so he is like, yeah, babe, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> um, because he knows that whatever we end up getting, whatever we use, it's going to be used and it's going to be used well and it's just it's makes the experience so much better because i i do not knock theater of the mind like if you use theater of the mind more power to you because i cannot <laughs> like i just i don't i don't have the ability i don't have the the diversity i guess would be a, a better way to say it without trying to explain what something looks like and sounding repetitive, you know, without saying, go, oh, go, oh, this corridor is dark and scary. What do I, <laughs> you know, with a map, I have a better idea of how to explain what I'm trying to explain. And if I don't quite get it right, they can still see, you know, there's a bunch of crates over here. There's some boxes over here, you know, the bartenders like over here. And I can move all of those pieces around and I can move them and I can move things. And I think, again, our, our setup is pretty high tech as, as it goes for right now. It used to not be. Like, do not get me wrong. Again, theater of the mind is magnificent. I just don't have it. And we used to hand draw maps, all right? I used to, I had a packet full of markers, like, I'll drop a picture in. Use between which program I like better. I like them both for different things. And I haven't, like I said, I haven't really done a whole lot with Wonder Draft, or excuse me, not Wonder Draft, Dungeon Draft. Um, but it looks super fucking promising. Like, I'm so excited to get to use it to use that art style for different things. Um, I was lucky enough, as it were, to, you know, have a husband who is a thousand percent supportive of whatever I decide to do when it comes to our D&D stuff. And so he is like, yeah, babe, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> um, because he knows that whatever we end up getting, whatever we use, it's going to be used and it's going to be used well. And it's just, it's makes the experience so much better because I, I do not knock theater of the mind. Like if you use theater of the mind, more power to you because I cannot, <laughs> like, I just, I don't. I don't have the ability, I don't have the, the diversity, I guess, would be a, a better way to say it, without trying to explain what something looks like and sounding repetitive, you know, without saying, go, oh, go, oh, this corridor is dark and scary, what do I, <laughs> you know, with a map, I have a better idea of how to explain what I'm trying to explain. And if I don't quite get it right, they can still see, you know, there's a bunch of crates over here. There's some boxes over here, you know, the bartenders like over here. And I can move all of those pieces around and I can move them and I can move things. And I think, again, our, our setup is pretty high tech as, as it goes for right now. 
It used to not be. Like, do not get me wrong. Again, theater of the mind is magnificent. I just don't have it. And we used to hand draw maps, all right? I used to, I had a packet full of markers, like, I'll drop a picture in. I used to have <laughs> our tokens and our characters were little plastic dinosaurs that I bought from the Dollar Tree. Like, I used to hand draw these maps on the back of graphing paper that I also got from Dollar Tree because it was gridded. And even though it wasn't exact, it might have been one inch, I don't know, but it was gridded and it worked and that's what I did. And then our dog ate all the maps and, you know, then what you do? <laughs> so I was like, do I redraw everything or do I just say fuck it and move to, you know, technology? And it's worked out really well for us. Um, especially, like I said, because I don't like to have separate maps. I, obviously, if you run into the lonely tavern on the side of the road, then that's going to be one single map. But for towns, for cities, for dungeons, for Eglantine Keep, which is a castle, and subsequently the Dark Palace, like, those are huge maps. You know, it's like seven layers. Eglantine Keep by itself is a seven level map, okay? And if I had to hand draw that, but, well, oh, <laughs> and I, we tried physical terrain once and it didn't really work out. It was a lot of work. Um, I love the DIY craft stuff. I love that idea, um, but it just, it wasn't, it didn't work out for us. Again, we have cats, okay? Cats and a dog and they just, they, cannot tell you the anxiety as a kitty mama when this little motherfucker decides that a glue gun looks like a fun toy okay like that oh, oh. <laughs> it was a whole is a whole thing so I already have enough trouble keeping you know the dice on the table because somebody ma'am likes to fucking fuck everything up <laughs> But, I don't know, like I said, as a whole, um, our setup, and I will never knock anybody else's setup, you know, it's just this is what works for us, and I would love to be able to share that with people. So, my goal for this channel is to help other DMs who maybe are just getting into the map making aspect, who maybe don't know exactly what they want from their maps yet you know they don't know what their style is or you know you can get so much inspiration and I will you know excuse the white girl like Pinterest all right like pin those motherfucking shits all right like real life inspiration um, other people's maps you know take artistic liberties I'm not saying you know straight up copy things and if there's somebody that you love whose maps you really really like like subscribe to those people okay like i have a patreon account for you know forgotten adventures for two minute tabletops for the ventus maps okay like i follow those people and i pay for their stuff because it's good and i use it all the time and it's like I pay for Dungeon Fog, and I bought Arkin Forge, and I bought Dungeon Draft. Like, those are things that have value to me, and I think that those artists deserve to be, you know, carried through. Like, fucking yes, <laughs> please continue to make things. And so, if there are things that you like visually, you know, use that. Use that, and use your whatever you decide to do to make those maps yours you know eglantine keep like i said it's a seven level castle but it looks suspiciously okay suspiciously like Fillmore house in north carolina like almost exact <laughs> okay because i found the blueprints for that and i was like fucking fuck this is a beautiful place and that's what I, like, that's exactly what I wanted the keep to look like. 
And so instead of trying to rack my brain figuring out, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to make this look? Somebody did it for me and I just adjusted it to fit what I needed. And let me tell you, I took like architecture classes in high school, okay? So like I have the brain power to physically build things like that. And even I was like, how the fuck am I going to build a castle, okay? So take inspiration where you can find it. And it's okay. Like, that's allowed. That's why the internet exists. Don't feel bad for using inspiration, you know? Because if what you make is good enough, and even if it's, you know, average, if somebody likes what you make, they're going to use it and they're going to use it as inspiration for their own stuff. You know, imitation is the highest form of flattery. <laughs> and so, you know, use what the universe has provided to you, okay? In that, sometimes it can be hard to kind of decide how you want to do things. And it's okay to change stuff as you go along. So my goal is to show you some of the maps that I've made make maps with you and you know give you tips tricks ideas if you use any of the software or the you know programs that i've mentioned and you need help with those things like maybe watching me do what i do will help you with your own um because it took me a while to figure out like oh i don't have to hand scale this every single time i can just hold the control and mouse wheel you know and i've been using that program for six months and it took me that long to figure it out <laughs> so it's one it's there's a lot of stuff that's like once you know it makes things so much easier and i think overall it's just my goal is to share what i do and what i've done and help other people along the way and if you have questions or if you want help or you know throw me ideas whatever you want to do you know I'm here for you guys because especially once we move it's gonna take us a little while to find a new group and I'm gonna have nothing to do but make maps and cry about not having another campaign <laughs> so thanks for staying around this long I know it's been a kind of a long intro to me not intro to the whatever you know and it's thanks for sticking around i know it's been quite a bit of information but i hope this sets the foundation for what you can expect from me and going forward i've got a lot of stuff planned um stuff that i need for me to just have but also stuff that i wish i had when i started so thanks for sticking around if you like what you see Hang out. Bye.